Five talking points from the week of track controversy and politics. Five talking points from the week of track controversy and politics. Is racing at the picturesque Rakaka track becoming boring? 1. Industry silence was deafening. The New Zealand racing industry isn't travelling overly well. Many stakeholders struggle to make ends meet. Central government appears reluctant to intervene and little is likely to change after Saturday's election. The pre-election silence from the racing industry leaders was deafening, there didn't appear to be any pressure for change put upon candidates. Why? Who knows, but what seemed an opportunity to push for government incentives similar to those enjoyed by the Australian racing industry was lost. The New Zealand thoroughbred racing and breeding industry contributes $1.2 billion a year to the economy, chasing hard on the heels of the higher-profile wine industry, including exports of 1,613 horses last year valued at $130 million. Not to mention further contributions from the harness and greyhound industries. An estimated 15,000 people are directly employed in the thoroughbred industry in New Zealand, and $500 million is generated in wages and salaries by the sector. Their voices need to be heard along with others who contribute. 2. Is regular racing at Rakaka good for the sport? Windsor Park played winner Ginger Nuts is giving his ownership team plenty of spice. Some punters are asking the question with a run of seven meetings at the Northland track since May 17. It's hardly enticing for punters on a track biased in favor of on-speed horses, and those south of Pukko become less inclined to make the trek north due to transportation costs. On the other hand, it is great for trainers in the north and for those from further afield looking for half-decent winter track conditions. At the most recent meeting on September 16, every race was won by horses from north of Pukko and in all bar two, horses planted on the pace saluted. No matter how you view it, that's less than ideal through the winter months while tracks like Ellerslie are largely unused through that period of the season. 3. Sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry. Let's be honest, as punters none of us wanted a slow 9 at Hastings on Saturday but there is one thing that would have been worse. New Zealand racing could not afford yet another an embarrassing abandonment because of a shifty track which happened at this meeting two years ago. Hawks Bay Racing could not have been more transparent with what they were doing with irrigation during the week. There were few complaints then but with the benefit of hindsight, when the track was hit with much more rain than was forecast within 12 hours of the first race, the knockers were out in force. But it's important to remember just how firm the track had got with the warm and windy bay weather and acknowledge that the club was forced to irrigate. Did they apply a little too much? The answer is most likely yes but hindsight is a wonderful thing and if they went the other way and the meeting was called off where would we be then? Saturday's track was unfortunate but you wonder if those complaining would have been the same ones whinging if the meeting was called off after one race because the good three surface was shifty. NZTR chief executive Bernard Sandre should be applauded for prioritizing ownership. 4. A winning G nuts is a winner for racing. Ginger Nuts is a good horse but his ability on the track is far outweighed by the good he does for racing. The New Zealand Derby winner was a short neck victor in Saturday's Group I Windsor Park Plate at Hastings over Brave first day winner close up with six time Group I winner Kali just behind in third. 
close-up being a live chance at the Triple Crown in the 2000 meters race on October 7 would have been a fairy tale story but is there a better advertisement for racing than the passion of the Tiaka Ginger Nuts Syndicate in their G-Nuts hats and tangerine attire? If Ginger Nuts can win the Live em All and head to the Caulfield Cup, where he will likely clash with New Zealand Horse of the Year Bonneville and her Australian Derby winning stablemate John Snow, on the back of two Group I victories, it will bring a serious boost to the New Zealand breeding and racing industry. Five NZTR right to prioritize ownership. Stakes increases, upgrading facilities and synthetic tracks. We all bang on about how important these are, and rightly so. But it was refreshing to see New Zealand thoroughbred racing (NZTR) chief executive Bernard Sandry talk of maintaining and growing ownership being one of his organization's priorities over the next 18 months. As Sandry rightly points out, owner participation is the bedrock of our sport. In his monthly report, Sandry spoke of beginning a dedicated program of work designed to break down the barriers to horse ownership and improve the ownership experience. We have all heard dozens of stories of owners having bad experiences for a variety of reasons and there is no question that there is a need to do more for owners and bring much needed new blood into the industry. Stakes increases. Upgraded infrastructure and a synthetic track won't mean much without more happy owners. It's just a plan at the moment but identifying the lack of growth in ownership and starting to address it is a positive start.